Hello folks, so today we're looking at car hacks. These are everyday tips and tricks that can help you out and make your life a bit more convenient. So keep watching. How many times have you gotten a new car and pulled up at the petrol station and you've thought, oh God, I don't know which side the fuel filler cap's on. The answer might be staring you in the face, quite literally. So in the majority of cars, next to the fuel pump icon on the fuel gauge, there's a little arrow, and the way that arrow points is the side of the car that the fuel filler cap's on. So if you're sitting there in the driving seat, you look down at that picture that we're looking at now, and uh, the arrow's pointing to the left, it's on the passenger side, all right? So it's as simple as that. Whichever way that arrow's pointing, that's the side your fuel filler cap's on. I learned that from a car hire guy at, at um, Belfast Airport many years ago. And uh, I was having a little look around the car and I sort of made reference to, oh, I better check where that is. And um, he told me, so thanks, Hertz guy at Belfast Airport. Right, next one. How many times have you struggled to get your keys off a key ring? I've got no fingernails at all because I'm a moron and I eat them, um, particularly during times of stress, like watching a film or something really important like that. I learned this one in a Volvo dealership when I stood in front of the woman on reception and uh, like a big strong man tried for about 15 minutes to get my house keys off my keychain and she took it from me, <clears throat> deployed the staple removal device, just clunked it in like that, pulled the key off, job done. So if you've got one of those staple extractors, you know, chuck it in the kitchen drawer or something and it will save you hours when you're trying to get things off your keys. So uh, that one works really well, I have to say. So um, I strongly recommend you do that in future if you struggle like me, which I'm aware not everyone does. All right, this one's probably been deployed more times than all of the other things here put together, but the old tennis ball hanging down from the garage up here. So if you've got a car that doesn't have parking sensors or it's got overly sensitive parking sensors, and you're still not sure where you are when you drive into the garage, how much room you need to give, blah, blah, blah. A really good thing to do is get a tennis ball, stick a hole straight through it with a drill or something, put a bit of string through it, tie it off at the bottom, park the car in the perfect position, have the tennis ball resting against the windscreen and attach it to the ceiling of the garage. Every time you drive into the garage then, you know that you've just got to have that tennis ball resting against the windscreen and you're in the perfect place. So simple, probably cost you two quid or something. And um, it might save you damaging your car. It might save you a load of hassle every time you're coming in out of the garage. It might just make life a bit easier, which is really what most of these things are about. You'll see that in loads of people's garages, particularly, you know, dads and granddads. So, um, yeah, they're not daft, are they? This one's another one that's garage related. So if you've got a really tight garage and you struggle to get the doors open and then you kind of slide out. By the way, I don't know too many people that keep their cars in the garage, but I'm aware that some of you do. But yeah, if you have to kind of slide out and you're desperately trying not to damage the paint on the car door, this is a pool noodle, right? So you've probably seen them. Kids have them in swimming pools quite often. It's just a huge, big foam spongy thing. You can pick them up in the pound shop. And, you know, it probably cost about a pound. See what I did there? Clever. Um, get a bit of batten. You can get a piece of batten like that. You can get a pack of batten for next to nothing. Attach it to the wall at sort of door height. The point that your door would, would catch the wall on the in the garage. Uh, attach the, cut the noodle in half. Attach it to the batten. And then every time you open the door in future, it's got a nice big spongy, foamy thing to rest against instead of a brick or breeze block wall that's going to pull the paint off it. Hopefully saves your door a bit of a bit of damage and carnage and um, makes getting in and out of your car a little less troublesome. Right, next one. I actually did this years ago. I, I can't remember if it was when I had my Celica or when I had my MX-6, but one of them had a quite low bucket sport seats in. And every time I sat down into the seat, everything would fall out of my pockets, keys, coins, etc. And then they'd go down that little divide, that little gap between the driver's seat and the centre console. And once stuff's down there, it's an absolute nightmare to get it out. I had real problems getting my house keys out a couple of times from there. 
and uh, so yeah, it's it's um it's a problem, folks. Not for all of you, but if if this happens in your car and with your particular trouserial arrangement, then you know that the you know the struggle is real. Um, what you can do with this is use a bit of pipe lagging. So it's very very similar material to the pool noodle, but the good thing with pipe lagging is it's a bit smaller. Uh, and it's usually dark grey, so it disappears into the trim of your car very, very nicely. Most people will never know it's there. What happens then is, if you um, get in the car and everything falls out of your pockets, it sits on top of that pipe lagging, not all the way down to the floor where you can't get your hand, you know, you can't get anything down there to, to fish anything out. So you just pop it below sort of the bolster of your seat, out of the eye line of most of your passengers, but it's just nice and easy if you do drop anything out of your pocket. Next one. If you've had a, a leaky sunroof before, you may know you've got a leaky sunroof by A, you get into the car and you've got pools of water, but it might be that you've just suddenly got loads of condensation in the car. You can never get rid of the condensation. In the inside of most sunroofs, they've got drain holes, and those drain holes mean that if any water or condensation builds up, in the sunroof which it could well do considering it's glass and all that and sometimes it's open and you get leaves in there and needles from trees get in there and all sorts of things even if you don't open your sunroof very often or at all you'll be amazed by how much crud and gunge gets in there all you really need to do is open it up hoover it if there's you know this picture here's a good example where the guy's got a load of leaves in there Give it a good hoover and a good clean and make sure the little drain holes are are free. Um, you might need to poke something into them or uh, probably not. Probably just a good hoover and a wipe down and it'll all free up and it should deal with the problem. Um, we actually had this on our tour ran and the first time round clearing it out just dealt with it for probably a year. And then the fault developed again. We had it checked out and there was actually a fault with the seal on it. Um, so we had to have a, a new a new seal put on the sunroof. But um, for a lot of people, just literally cleaning it out properly will solve your problem. Misty headlights. This is, uh, again, this is one you might already know about, but there are different ways to deal with misty headlights. If they get really bad, it can be an MOT failure, and it doesn't look very nice anyway, and it obviously means your headlights are not as effective. But um, if it's really severe, you might need a more severe treatment, but first port of call as a really cheap first crack at it is bicarbonate of soda toothpaste. So get bicarbonate of soda toothpaste, get it on a rag or a mic microfiber and just polish the hell out of those headlights with it and really, really put some elbow grease into it. And you'll be amazed by how much of an improvement it makes. Now, the next step up from that is you, a, you can get things like I think Auto Glim do a headlight restoration kit. You know, it's a little bit pricey, but it does the job really, really well. And um, if you're really talented with a polishing wheel, you've got a polishing wheel, you can always use um, a compound on it, or you can sand it down or, or buff it down with a uh, with a scotch pad or something and, and then buff it out. And you get a brilliant finish with that. But obviously not everybody's got the equipment or the, the budget to do it. But really good, cheap, let's have a crack at it is to get some bicarbonate of soda toothpaste and apply elbow grease and lots of it because you know you really need to put a bit bit of welly into it but you you'll be amazed by the finish that you can get just with toothpaste okay and then the last one this is the one that probably fewest people fewer people do and it makes a massive difference so how many times do you wash your car or take it through a car wash uh, you may wash the car by hand on a Sunday or something. You may take it through a car wash once a month or a couple of times a month. Think about how many times you do that and then how many times you clean the rubbers on your windscreen wipers. People often go and get their wipers changed because they think the wipers are inefficient and they're not doing the job. Uh, quite often they just need to be cleaned. Obviously old wipers get brittle, they perish. But even in relatively new cars... You could get in, clean the windscreen, it's horrible. I mean, that A3 that I've just taken on, it's done 5,000 miles, and the wipers were awful on it. So I cleaned the wipers, they're brilliant now. Uh, and that's often all they need. Obviously, if the wipers are old and brittle, 
you cleaning them, you might actually finish them off. They, you know, they might just break at that point. But if they do, they need to replace it anyway, didn't they? But just make a habit of when you clean your car, whether it's going through a car wash or doing it by hand or going to a hand car wash place, just give pull the wipers up and just give the rubber a quick clean, just with some window cleaner. And honestly, the difference it makes in the efficiency of wipers is brilliant. Uh, there's one other that I don't have a graphic for, and I've never tried this, which is why I didn't bother getting a graphic for it. But um, I've heard about this one before, but as I said, I've never tried it. If you want to stop your windows icing up overnight, the night before, you spray something onto them. And, I mean, you can buy things to do it. I've tried those before and didn't find them to be much good. But this solution is um, three parts white vinegar to one part water. And you put it in a spray bottle, shake it up like mad, and just spray it on the windscreen. And then, you know, go in, go to sleep. And hopefully in the morning, your windscreen's not frozen. Your car might stink of vinegar, though, or certainly the outside might stink of vinegar. As I said, I don't know if it works, but it seems like it should, if that makes any sense whatsoever. If you've got any car hacks that I haven't mentioned here, obviously I've just whipped through a few that sort of came to mind immediately. But if you've got any that um, I haven't mentioned here, please drop them in the comments. Is there something you've been doing for years that you feel other people might get benefit from? Drop it in the comments. And folks, have a look in the comments because you might find something really useful to you. Uh, so yeah, check it out. Um, I'm going to leave my Amazon link as a pinned comment. Please, if you're buying anything from Amazon at all, just click through that link. It tells Amazon that I've sent you to them. I literally get like a couple of pence if you spend a fiver on it, but hopefully it all mounts up and um, gives me something worthwhile at some point. So please do that. If it doesn't get used, Amazon take it away. So um, at the moment, it's not really getting used. So I'd appreciate your support in um, using my Amazon link. Aside from that, follow me on socials. So I'm on Facebook at Definitely Not A Guru. I'm on Twitter at Not A Guru 3. And you can check out my website, notaguru.co.uk. There's a support page there, and there are lots of other ways you can support the channel if Amazon's not your thing. Thanks very much, guys. Hope to see you next time.